Hello, I'm Michael Lennox, MPA Lead for All Matters LPC. Thanks for joining us for our second event in a series on the right review and its impact on community pharmacy representation and support structures. This time we're looking to reach out to those independent pharmacy colleagues who are reps and chairs on the LPC network. We will be discussing and sharing thoughts on the review, its recommendations, the implications and thinking about its bearing on our sector and independent pharmacy in particular. Joining us on the panel are esteemed colleagues from the senior leadership structures in community pharmacy. So please let me introduce the panel. So firstly, let me introduce my NPA colleague, Rena. Uh, my name is Rena Barai. I am an independent contractor for the pharmacy based in Sutton and Surrey. I'm also an NPA board member and a member of the PSSE committee. Um, I've had the privilege of being involved with David Wright Review as an uh, independent member of the steering group committee as well. Thank you. Thank you, Rena. Uh, next to Anit. Hi, uh, my name is Anit Kapoor. I'm a greater, chair of Greater Manchester LPC. I've uh, been an independent contractor for about 15 years now and been involved in LPC for 14 of those years for my team. Thank you, Anit. Our colleague Raj. Hi, my name is Raj Hathara. I chair Pharmacy in London, which is a federation of London LPCs, uh, 13 of, the, of them. Uh, I also am the chief officer of Bromley Bexley Greenwich LPC and also Lucian Mall Southwark Lambeth LPC. Um, I'm also a community pharmacist. I locum on Saturdays to make sure that I do still get that patient facing uh, feedback. It's very important to have that when you're sitting in meetings so you can relate to real life instances uh, that uh, that patients bring to you. Thanks Raj and finally our colleague Mark from sunny County Durham. Hello I'm Mark Burden uh, in County Durham which is very sunny today. Um, I've, I'm a long-standing member of PSNC. I've been there since about 2006. Uh, I'm a pharmacy owner and LPC member and a lot of other different things. But for tonight, I think it's focusing on the LPC and PSNC. Thanks. So that's our panel, everybody. OK, so let's start with the questions then. So firstly, to our colleague, Anit. Uh, Anit, um, I wonder, might you share some thoughts on what you were hoping for from the right review, please? Uh, thanks, Michael. Yeah. Um, from the, the review itself, I, I'm not going to lie and say that um, it's something that we've needed for a long time within the sector um, and uh, there was a, a level of apprehension um, around the review and, and the way that it panned out. Uh, and I think the main things that I was looking for was around uh, clear, uh, clear lines of accountability and responsibility within the representation of the sector. I think uh, we've actually uh, we've plodded on for quite a few years um, between national and local without clear, uh, clear lines of accountability between the two and, and what the responsibility was for, for each of the entities that were supporting community pharmacy and what they were expected to deliver, uh, ultimately for contractors. Uh, and I think this, is, this was the main thing. It was, it was getting the, um, the best uh, for what contractors are paying for with the levy, um, getting the value for money, um, finding the efficiencies in the system. Um, I've, like I said, mentioned before, I've been involved in LPCs now for, for 14 of the 15 years as a contractor. And one of the very uh, early things that I saw was the level of duplication, um, that we were all doing the same thing so many times. So here in Greater Manchester, we were seven LPCs at that time, and we used to have a, a regional LPC meeting, and you would just literally sit there and listen to, to everybody regurgitate the same thing that they're doing. And it was, it was like pulling teeth at times. You're thinking, really, guys? We're all doing this so many times. Um, and uh, I worked very closely with a colleague back then, Peter Marks, who was the chair of a Stockport LPC. Um, and we just hit it off on a conversation around the, the level of duplication. Uh, and we ended up moving to a very a federated model very early on, on the back of the Lansley paper, uh, for what GM was doing and the, and the, uh, the dissolution of, of PCTs and it was becoming NHS Greater Manchester. And the seven LPCs back then, and we saw how well it could work um, as a federated model, which obviously led to, to the merger um, of Great Manchester LPC, six of the seven, in 2016. And I've seen that progression and I've seen the evolution. Um, and what I hope that we, you know, to believe that we've delivered in terms of value for contractors in that time as well, um, and, what, and how we're trying to set ourselves up for the future. And I think I 
my main thing for the review was to be able to see that replicated across the country and it not be in patches. So we've seen some great work across the country in West Yorkshire, uh, Raj's team down in London as well, and how they've worked, worked in federated models. And it seems to be that it's, you know, it is in very proactive areas, but we needed to get to that point for everybody. So contractors across the country were getting the same, uh, the same representation and support uh, for all of us. So I think that was the main thing from the report for, uh, for, the, for the review for me was to, to see how that was articulated and extracted out. And Neat, thank you for sharing the journey that you've had already on Manchester and your experiences. And I, I know that you've made, uh, you've made your own revolution in Manchester ready ahead of the, the, the right review itself. Well, well done and thank you. Um, Raj, may, may we um, have some thoughts from yourself on the same question in terms of what you were hoping for, please? Very much similar to what I need to say, really. I, I think what I'm looking for is um, the accountability and the process of contractors giving a mandate to the organisation to go and actually engage with NHS England or and and hopefully the structure that we produce uh, works and NHS England gets the message as well because I think NHS England needs to become a, a, a willing commissioner. I, I sense there's, there's a, a certain amount of block there that's occurring and hopefully once they see that what we've actually organized ourselves into a more <coughs> efficient way of working, they will then, as I say, become a willing commissioner. Um, it is really, really back down to the contractor. I mean, I am not a contractor myself, um, but I engage, I've been engaging with contractors uh, as LPC uh, CEO and also as a chair. And, it, and somehow we've lost that dialogue with them and we have it at a local LPC level, but somehow it just evaporates as we, as we move up uh, into, the, into the PSNC per se. So we definitely, definitely need to get that lineage uh, between the constituent and the actual uh, uh, representative base. So from, from that point of view, I, I need to this process to be open and transparent and hopefully it brings sufficient funding for the contractor so they have confidence in the process that we've gone through. Now, what I'm hearing from our contractors and we've, I've had, I've forgotten the number of meetings I've had with contractors, what they're saying is we're in financial contraction at the moment and you're asking us now to invest in this uh, change. Now, we need to be very careful how we handle that because they still have memories of the Langsley reforms of the NHS and how painful that was for, for the contractor base. So we need to handle this very, very carefully. So from an organisational point of view, uh, I need to be open and transparent and take my contractors on a journey which maybe is painful for some of them because we are we are going to be asking them to do some very difficult things and think some very difficult things but my aim at the end of it is for the whole sector I think we really need to focus on that relationship between the pharmacist and the patient in a community pharmacy now I often give this example um, of uh, can you name me German car manufacturers, and we can all rattle them fours off, can't we? If I ask you, name me a British car manufacturer, we're all going to be struggling, you know, apart from Morgan and Bristol, which are very niche uh, manufacturers, you know, the main ones aren't sort of British. And the reason for that is quite simple. Uh, way back, the Germans in invested in their workforce. So they said, you know, the people that make these cars, we, we want to invest in them to make sure that they have the right skills of the right quality management to produce a good product. Whereas we just went down the automation line and lost a whole industry. Um, I think there's lessons to be learned from that. And I'd want to focus on that, empowering our workforce, giving them the right skills and improving that contact between the pharmacist and the patient. And I think if we do that, then I think the profession is in safe hands. And just to sort of round off, I kind of feel the weight on my shoulders because I want to be in a position to hand a very good profession over to the next generation. 
uh, and I've got a vested interest because I've got a f son who's a, f I don't know, it's going to be a provisionally registered pharmacist soon. And the professional pharmacy has given me a, a very good living. It's, it's given me a, 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 an exciting living and it's given me an opportunity to meet so many wonderful people and make a, a change. And I want to be able to do that for the next generation. And I think that's part of the motivation that I have to see that, that this right of view is done properly. Uh, it, it is important, it is needed because, uh, as Anit said, our negotiations with NHS England weren't going in the right direction, we weren't getting the right results, and it ended up in a judicial review, which wasn't good for anyone, so we needed a, a new way of thinking. Um, like Anit, I was apprehensive until um, Simon Dukes and uh, Professor David Wright actually came to my Farms in London meeting, and they were very open, honest and frank, and they were very perceptive and they took on board much of what we said. So, you know, that allayed some of our fears, but I think we all need to make this work together and, and we need to provide a united front, which I feel that we don't have at the moment. There is a lot of short term um, strategies going on by trade bodies, by certain companies, which in the long term hurt the profession. And I, I would also point the finger at some independents. I'm not going to say it's only, only the sort of trade companies, it's also independents. And the reason that we are in a position that we are is because we haven't valued what the community pharmacy is. We haven't actually monetized the value of community pharmacy. We've given away so much value as free and it's very hard to row back from them. I want to take community pharmacy and make it more of a profession and more of a, a clinician led uh, enterprise as opposed to a sort of, um, I don't know, a commercial retail enterprise. I want to move, that's the traveller direction I would like to go in. And I hope if we do that, we focus on that relationship between the clinician and the patient, I think we're in safe hands. Raj, thank you. Really meaningful testimony there. Re really, thank you for your for your thoughts. Um, Mark, can I can I come to yourself then? Because I know you'll bring a, a, a another different perspective to this, given given the roles that you wear within leadership within pharmacy. Thank you. Indeed, Michael. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, I'll, t I'll talk at this one from a PSNC level. Um, although I have an interest at every level, um, all views are my own. I think uh, is the phrase, isn't it? Um, but what I would say is that this is genuinely uh, an independent review. And there was, there was some folk out there who were saying, well, you know, this is all just controlled. No, it was genuinely an independent review. So from my uh, own perspective, I took an early decision not to get involved with the process. And I know that others on the, on the PSNC committee, other regional reps did exactly the same. Um, I'm not going to come here and, and apologise for PSNC or, or go over what's happened in the past, but it's a difficult job. Um, you know, there, there's people there who work incredibly hard within the committee, but also um, the, the executive who work ridiculously long hours, I'm sure. And, you know, the chief executive of PSNC is probably the hardest job in pharmacy and a very, very difficult job in, in, in any sense. So, you know, I've got, to, I've got to cut people some slack, but I think what people often forget is that we are a committee of 31 contractors. So I own pharmacies, I've, I work as a community pharmacist regularly, and on the, the independent side, all the same, and on the multiple side, it's people who are appointed by their respective organizations. and. You know, people usually tend to forget that and they think it's just a, you know, a bunch of folk in an ivory tower. It isn't. And, you know, we all try our best. Nobody goes there to, uh, to do a bad job. Nobody sets out to do a bad job. You know, everybody uh, is, is there to add what they can to community pharmacy. So I think, you know, give people credit. However, um, I was pleased when when I heard that there was a review coming. As as I say, I, I, I took a personal decision to step back from it because I'd, I'd rather somebody else 
tell us whether we're doing a good job or not. And ultimately, it's, it's the contractors, the pharmacy owners, who have to be in the driving seat of whatever comes from this. And it's not about the individuals. It's not about people like me or Rena or you know, anybody else on the committee. It's, it, it's about what's best for pharmacy contractors. So the thing that I am most pleased about in the review is the, uh, the, the comments that we've had from uh, you know normal contractors out there who wouldn't ordinarily have time or, or inclination to make lots of comments and it's it's just helpful to hear what they think and what their main challenges and and interests are so yeah overall I'm generally very positive about the review I can't wait to get started on it uh, even if you know from a, I'm not bothered look you know I've been doing this a long time now if it all comes to an end tomorrow, so be it. But, you know, it, it's got to be what's right for the, the general body of contractors. So that's all from me on that. Thank one. you, Mark. Thank, thank you for your lovely philosophy is there and, 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 and what you've shared. Uh, crikey, Rena, um, did you want to have a go of, of, of summarising those, those really deep thoughts from our, from our three colleagues there and, and uh, put a little bit of your experience in on top of it too, please? Yeah, I, I, for me, it's a real pleasure to be able to talk openly about this because obviously being part of the steering committee, it, it's been a, a sort of closed conversation and, and I have absolutely loved listening to what you've all said. And the purpose of this video cast is for the LPCs, especially the independent reps on the LPCs, to kind of um, listen to other people's views because that's really, really empowering and really interesting to hear other people's views. But also to come up with the sort of questions that we need to ask David um, about the review. Think about the sort of concerns from an independent, uh, independent point of view as well. Um, so you all raise really interesting questions. And I think Anita, you said, you know, this is, this is a review that was needed for a long time. And actually, you've got to remember, this is the first review of its kind. We haven't had one ever in the history of LPCs and PSCs. So, you know, first of all, that's, that's great. And the fact that one of the recommendations is that we continue to review uh, the situation is really, really positive. Um, I think um, that one of the points you made, Anit, is about you know, reducing that duplication of effort. And I feel like some of the uh, structures that um, David has recommended, um, such as the you know, centralisation of HR and training and comms and things like that, will really help um, LPCs to reduce that duplication of effort. And I feel that's a positive kind of step, and it would be interesting to see if other LPCs agree with that. Um, so I think that's a question that LPCs should be asking themselves as well. In terms of what Raj said, um, you know, um, absolute music to my ears about a united front. Uh, and one of the things I've kind of looked at this review as is, you know, in an ideal world, this is like pharmacy representation utopia. You know, if everything that he recommends actually fell into place, uh, you know, we could really create the utopia that's needed for pharmacy. And I think we do owe that to contractors, uh, we owe that to community pharmacy. Uh, to kind of help create that utopia um, and where there is no conflict of interest, if we live in a political vacuum would be great, wouldn't it? Uh, and, you know, I think that's a job for all of us as LPCs and um, contractors and representatives, uh, people on, on boards and things to, to work towards. Um, and I think, Mark, you made a really important point about how this was a genuinely independent um, review. Uh, and actually, when you ask when you do an independent review and you ask people for their opinions, you get pure honesty. And I think if you read between the lines of the report, you can see the honesty and you can see the need for change. Uh, and you can see that contractors want to change. You know, uh, and, and also, I think David's given some good examples of other organisations, other professions that have gone through a similar process of change and how they've dealt with it. So I think there's, there's a lot of hope there, but I think we really need to kind of hone in on the sort of questions that LPC should be asking themselves. Um, and one of the things, just to, just to round off, is something that Raj said about contractors giving uh, their representative body the mandate. And I think that's something we really need to think about. How are we going to engage with the contractors? How many of them do you think have really read this? How many of you think have understood the implications for them and the fact that they could now maybe mandate their LPC to do something? Or, uh, you know, so we really need to think about that uh, to support the LPCs to kind of have those contractor conversations um, at, at a sort of grassroots level. Rena, thank you. So a great big set of thoughts there for our first question. Okay, let's tee up our second question, have a, a second bit of dialogue. 
Okay, so thanks panel. Question number two, uh, if I could come to a neat, and, and really I'm just hoping for some thoughts on what you've made about the specific recommendations, Anit. Risks, opportunities, positives, negatives, that sort of thing, please. Uh, yeah, well, uh, Michael, I, I mentioned I was quite apprehension, uh, apprehensive about the, the actual review itself, um, and I will say that I was pleasantly surprised when I got the copy um, and had the chance to read through it. Uh, I think the uh, the wholesomeness and the depth of the review uh, was, was fantastic and credit to the, to the actual team um, in what they did uh, and the research that went into it. And I, I think if you can capture most of the concerns that we had pre-review into that document and articulate them the way in the, in the way it has been, um, that's a credit to the team. And then I think that what they've done is actually go through each of those, uh, those kind of inverted commas issues um, and actually apply a logic to them on what a solution could look like uh, within the recommendation. So I think that's where I've welcomed it in, in, the, mo in the main, is that the, the recommendations have come backed up with what the actual concerns were, uh, as opposed to just wading in with a whole host of recommendations to a sector on how we think uh, things should be. So I think that's the first thing that I'll say, and it reads very well, um, and, and obviously uh, it's great on paper, uh, and everything is great on paper, uh, until it comes to the do uh, on implementing it. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of the opportunities, obviously they're vast. There's, uh, there's there's so much within that that we can achieve, and if we're able to to nail um, a lot of that and, and, and you know seek out the, the clarity on a few a uh, few elements and uh, to drive the sector forward, then we're getting to the point of what we wanted as the aim, which is effective representation of the sector, uh, effective negotiating, and, and really putting community pharmacy where it should be on the map. Um, and, and getting the best for contractors for what their, their levy pays us uh, to deliver for them. And I say us, I'm talking about the, the representatives of their sector, whether they're local or national. Uh, I'm not differentiating at all there. Uh, we all have a role to play. Um, but in, terms, in terms of the, um, the, the concern that I have is, is the amount of work that this is going to take um, to deliver. It's not small. Uh, it's massive. Um, and, I, you know, like I said before, I've gone through a few changes here in GM. But this is that that's not even a drop in the ocean uh, of what this is going to be. This is this is huge. Um, I think the main one is the collectiveness that this needs, um, and this is not just about independence. This is about everybody and the one voice mentioned in many of the um, of the results that came back from the different surveys and the and the different um, bits of research that the team did and in the interviews. And it's also within the recommendations about the one voice. But actually nailing that and actually getting to that point where we have one voice as a sector uh, to be effectively then represented to, to arm um, policy groups such as the, the NFC and the NT to deliver what we want uh, on the back of a strategy, uh, that is no mean feat. That's going to take some doing. Uh, and it's going to need every single stakeholder of community pharmacy to pull together to be able to deliver that. Uh, if we have anybody straying from that, then we're already going to be undermining ourselves um, from day one. Uh, and, and kind of pulling away from what we need to achieve. So I think that's the, the first one um, for myself in terms of, of a concern. Uh, I think then if I move into the independence, I think there's, uh, there's always been a gap. Um, Michael, you'll know yourself that uh, I don't shy away from saying it, that the independent contractors are kind of left to their own devices out there in LPCs um, without a real sphere um, and, and, and guidance to effectively represent independent contractors is very much for themselves rather than the wider sector. That needs to change. Uh, independent contractors on LPCs, their mentalities and their psyche needs to change. They need to think about the bigger picture, not just their own pharmacy premises. They need to think about not just the independent sector, primarily that because they're independent co uh, contractor reps, but then the impact are wider on community pharmacy uh, and to, to, to drive us all forward together. I think the other bit for myself is, is around the contractor split and ensuring that um, and just, I think more of it is around clarity. So where we've got the, uh, the, the CPEC and the council, obviously it's the chairs. Um, it's ensuring that those individuals around that table are representing LPC viewpoints because that's where the, uh, the representation is. And it's just, that's where the contractor split is. And it's not individual viewpoints because I think if we, if we don't get that governance right, then we're, you know, we're, we're in a bit of a, a, bit of a sticky wicket there. Um, on making sure that we're satisfying everybody. And I think the other one there is the feeding in into the strategy and governance board and what the makeup of that and how, how that is come together. That's, um, that's supposed to be, uh, or is intended to be, should I say, a, an independent body 
uh, and we need to make sure that that, um, that is quite clear. It's not so clear in the in figure 5.2 of the report and the outline structure that it is an independent body uh, and that needs to be articulated and clear because it, it's not the narrative really isn't there um, on how that comes together and how it's made up. Um, so we're all uh, looking for, you know, holding to account and the governance of, of national and local bodies uh, and that needs to be quite clear within it. And I think the, the other one for myself is around um, the cost and ensuring that they are captured and captured well um, before we embark on this because I was just looking at it from, from a perspective here. It's just as, as a chair and we're talking very hypothetically here, it's not what I signed up to be on some national council. Um, but if I was to be, and if we look at what the paper's saying, uh, you know, if I was a chair in Mark's region, that means the potential that I would be taking on what Mark does and what I do into one role. Um, that is a lot of work. That is a big commitment for an individual to take on. And that's aside from the financial impact on what that's going to cost. Um, and, I, and I'm just a bit nervous on whether the costs here have been captured well. Um, we talk, they, they talked about the four million in reserves uh, that we've got within LPCs, which is all great for the transformation point of view, and we've got the money for the change, but what about the sustainability going forward? Is that costed out? Is, is, it, is it practical to be paying for, for that level um, going forward? Um, and I think the other one is the, the element around the LPCs, where it talks about uh, uh, the LPCs or the CPL being representative um, and, and not support. So I think that then also creates a big void um, around support. Um, there are a lot of contractors out there that depend on contractor support. And I know that uh, it talks about the, um, the kind of resource center where we've got all the, the different elements of support that, but a lot of that is support for LPC's back office functions. It needs to be clearly outlined and articulated where does contractor support so if we've got services and we want to roll out services, yes, this wraps up in the, we're talking about wrapping it up into the, the service negotiation um, to have the funding for it, but where does the delivery sit? That needs to be clearly outlined. Again, that, that's the clarification. Um, and I think the other bit is, as, as well as the, the paper is written and the number of recommendations are great, um, uh, many of them are interlinked and they're, they're listed as, as 33 individual recommendations, but they're not really uh, at all. Um, they, 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 a lot of them stand together and they, they depend upon each other. So we'd also need to be very, very careful about what process you undertake when it comes to agreeing this review uh, with contractors that this is what they want us to do um, and how we actually ensure that we're not going to be having a process where certain bits get picked up and certain bits uh, uh, don't um, because it's all in, interdependent in, in my view. Beautifully expressed, Anit. Thank you. Really, really thoughtful. You've 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 been very forensic in your in your considerations of this review. You've obviously got right under the skin of it, and there's a fair bit of skin to get under at 124 pages. Um, thank you, um, Raj. Can I can I turn to you now and uh, and and ask a similar question around the uh, the recommendations, please? Okay. Um, obviously, we we've gone through the report as well as a team in Pharmacy London and as an LPC. Uh, both LPCs. There are a number of recommendations and it's good to have something, as Anit said, on paper that you can look at. It's, it's harder to start on a blank sheet of paper, but it's good to have somebody else who's done the work and said, here, yeah, this is what I think. So it gives you a chance to critique it uh, um, with, with your experience. You, you look at the structures. Um, for us, uh, coming to the structure, it's probably not right. Um, we need that, as I said earlier, that lineage of accountability from the contractor to the executive board. The strategy and oversight board needs to change as well. Uh, we'd like to see a separate oversight and a committee. Um, so we were looking at other governance structures from local authority, the trusts, you know, even the governor, school governors, so to see how they manage that governance process. So to have something separate to actually overview what's going on. Now I take on board what Anita is saying and what contractors are saying is the element of cost in this um, and the time frame within which to actually complete this task. 
would be nice if we could ask uh, some funding from the Pharmacy Integration Fund to help us actually make this transformation. Um, after all, initially that was take money funding taken away from community pharmacy, so it would be would be an ideal way to sort of uh, underpin the foundation of change that we're really after. Um, and each was also talking about representation and support. Um, that's not clear representation and clear support. There's almost a gradient and sometimes you go to support and you end up representing and sometimes when you're supposed to be representing you end up supporting. So I think that would be very very difficult to define and I think we do a extremely good job of balancing that support and representation and that's across all sectors of pharmacy including CCA, AIM, independence that level of support and representation is done. When it's done well it really is fantastic so I can cite the London Flu Vaccination Service that's when we all were all pointing in the right direction and that was done well. That's what we need to capture if I could bottle that that would be brilliant um that was hard work but it was well worth it honestly it was well worth it um my, my sort of risks are about disenfranchisement occurring with our contractor base they see the colossal workload and they think oh my god how are we going to manage this and that's also a risk for our lpc members as well um you know when, when you sort of present this to them it's it's a big challenge uh, it's a big challenge to get your head around first of all, reading the report in the busy time uh, frames that we are at the, at the moment. So I've floated the idea in our LPCs about focus groups, very similar to this, about you know five or six contractors uh, meeting together and saying, hey, come on, give me your ideas uh, about how we should take this vote forward. Um, I think that will be a way to uh, hopefully implement this right review. And I might even task our PCN community pharmacy leads to do that if, I, if I'm feeling a bit uh, mischievous, shall I say. <laughs> so so there, there is potential there, but uh, I think it needs tweaking to get the right balance for all contractors. Raj, thank you. Really thoughtful. Again, appreciate it. Um, Mark, ag ag again, and, and again, don't be afraid to dial up your your PSNC experience, because uh, it's uh, deep and mighty. Yeah, so it's a, it's a very ambi ambitious uh, piece of work involved in all of this, as Anit mentioned earlier on. And uh, there's certain parts of the report that, that are going to be really easy to implement. So changing a name on a letterhead or on a, on a sign, yeah, there's a little bit of cost to it, but it's, it's quite easy to do. The real change is changing the uh, some of the structures that exist and perhaps some of the vested interests that exist in certain places uh, merging LPCs is always a thorny issue and it's it's really interesting to hear from from both Raj and Anit about how they've federated because we're probably going to have to have to see more of that you know in, in the report itself it indicates that uh, the National Council is a maximum of 50 people well, that in itself says that that is a maximum of 50 LPCs, isn't it? That's what's envisaged. So it's it's not, um, you know, it's not all set in stone yet. But yeah, as, as I mentioned previously, I'm really positive about it all, really up for the change. One thing I would like to see is the, a recognition of the balance of contractors overall, so that um, we continue to be in a position where um, the independents are, are represented equally with the interests of the multiples and no one side is uh, is holding the whip hand. I mean, we've, you know, we're broadly 50-50 in terms of numbers, whichever way you want to cut it. You know, it's, it's a few percent either sides. So it, it just makes sense to to maintain that 50-50 that balance, particularly in light of, you know, people's confidence in, in the organisation. Um, and, and again, something Anit said, you know, we do all this work and, and there are literally hundreds of people out there, thousands of people in LPCs up and down the country who are doing all of this uh, for nothing. There's no payment 
for um, uh, being a member of, of an LPC. Yes, you get back, Phil, but, you know, it's not a, a king's ransom, is it? And you get nothing for being on PSNC. So, you know, we're, we're really delving into the areas of, of goodwill, aren't we? And, you know, the goodwill out there is, is enormous, massive. We've got some brilliant people who, uh, who do things uh, in their own time, you know, you see when emails are sent and received, it's 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 sometimes ridiculous, but yeah, you know, overall, let's uh, let's dwell on the positives and and uh, yes, there's lots of challenges, but you know, one thing I would say is again, it, you know, I think it's already been mentioned, the timescales involved are are quite ambitious. Whether it can all be carried out in the in the stated timescales, I don't know, and and does it need to be? you know we, we've we've got a long-term job to do let's let's make sure we get it right thanks so thank you mark uh rena over to yourself again and uh see if you can summarize and, and again add some of your own experiences please i think i've got the hardest task here haven't i it's really difficult <laughs> uh there is uh, so much wisdom here um and to try summarize that is really really difficult i, I think for me there's a few points um yes this is a massive job um, and um, my worry is it shouldn't be a distraction from the what should be the day job of LPCs, making sure that we're having those conversations locally with the people that we need to be having conversations with, representing um, uh, you know, contractors. And while we try to get our house in order uh, at PSNC, CPE uh, level and at sort of LPC level, uh, I wouldn't want this to be a major distraction that stops us doing the things that we should be doing. And so that's going to be really difficult, especially with what we've just gone through with COVID. But that's something we need to consider. Um, again, just thinking about that duplication of effort. And if we're all going to be going through this process of change, maybe there's a way to coordinate the change. And uh, Raj, you mentioned the gradient. And I think we're, you know, we've got different LPCs across the country that are at different stages of all of these processes. And is there a way to share that best practice? Is there a way to kind of create a roadmap, maybe? Uh, a, a way to support people to kind of go step by step. These are the things to do. These are the time scales. This is how we did it. This is how we went wrong. This is the way we could you know, do things better. Is there some collective thought that needs to be had around that? Um, I, I liked Raj's idea about uh, engaging with contractors and having focus groups. I think that's absolutely key um, because you know the, the thing that kind of I always had at the back of my mind when I sat in that steering committee was this is people's money. This is their money that goes into the levy that goes into these organisations. And every time I thought, what's the best for the person paying that levy? What is the best outcome for them? And I think, uh, you know, we must engage contractors. Uh, and uh, and it, like you said, you know, you're a chair of an LPC, but you didn't sign up to be part of a council. And, and actually, maybe over the next two years, we've got a journey to help people um, to kind of get to that stage where they do feel confident to be on a council. Um, and there is a lot of wisdom in that PSNC committee right now. And obviously, if that is disbanded, Got a lot of people there who are really, uh, you know, uh, clued up, really understand the system uh, that we need to tap into, and we mustn't lose that throughout all of this. Uh, so those are sort of my worries and concerns. Uh, interestingly, a couple of times people have really talked about the independent um, governance and strategy uh, board, and I feel like there does need to be more clarity on that. So definitely, that's one of the questions that LPC should be asking um, of David Wright at, at, at the meeting on the eighth of July. And that's it for me. Thank you. Uh, I mean, from an NPA point of view, whatever final structure emerges, and perhaps this blueprint that's on the table now is a stepping stone to discussion, thinking, and and further evolution. Who knows? Obviously, the NPA want to make sure that there's the distinctive voice of independent pharmacy is absolutely strongly heard within the mix. But it's it's really critical that this works for everyone, big, big and small. And, and this is our opportunity to, to endeavour to pull together to make that happen. Right. Thanks, panel. Uh, so if we could just then take a, a briefer moment and have a quick er, go around the panel in terms of what you personally think needs to happen next. And uh, Anit, if you wouldn't mind kicking off, that'd be lovely. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks, Michael. Um, so obviously, there's a, there is a quite a few bits of clarity that we still need uh, on certain parts of the, of the review. And obviously, we have the opportunity with Professor Wright um, uh, on, on July the 8th. But in terms of, of uh, the review itself and the mobilisation, and, and, and rather than have the answers, I've probably got more questions, Michael. You thought, that's, the, that's not what you're looking for from me today, but 
it is probably around where the where the accountability is going to lie to mobilize this uh, to mobilize the view how are we going to come together as a sector both local and national uh, to push this forward um, and you know we've mentioned um, the, the roadmap already uh, is that something that needs to be outlined and articulated and, and people are joining at certain junctures um, but the principle of it is is before we even get to that stage how do we how do we engage the contractors to ensure that this review and the outcomes of this review is actually what they want? Um, is this what contractors want from LPCs and PSNC uh, to deliver for them uh, for their for their levy? Because it's a big big change for them um, and how they're supported. There's going to be a lot of shift in in activity. Uh, some of it's going to go national. Some of it's going to stay local. And for them, they need to get their head around that. So I don't think that's an easy feat. It's great for those guys to be sat around the table and nationally agree it, um, but we, we, they pay their levy to us and ultimately we're accountable to them. So it's got to be their decision. Um, I think the other bit, obviously, we've, we've mentioned uh, around the governance and the decision making, and that's got to be critical um, on whether it's got to be transparent all the way through. We've done very well thus far um, with the review process in, and that needs to be maintained. Uh, and I've already mentioned the strategy and governance uh, board and, uh, and you know uh, my colleagues have also mentioned it how that needs to sit outside to ensure that that continues on throughout the whole process um, but I also um, want to think about the opportunities here around committee members so we've got committee members on there um, but from our, from our uh, esteemed uh, national uh, chemist colleagues at the CTA they, they do pick the best of their bunch in most areas to, to sit on LPCs some on multiple LPCs uh, the independent contractors, as I mentioned before, are kind of left to their own devices. And I think that this gives us an opportunity, especially where we're looking at a fixed term, certain skills that they need to, they're going to need to be, have to be on LPCs, which is quite you know, outlined into the report. Some may be a chair to then go on to a national role. There's a clear kind of pathway there for a committee member. Um, and is there something that we need to be doing with them uh, pre, the, uh, pre them joining the LPC? So there was a, a bit of GDPR, et cetera. But I'm thinking a bit more than that. Is there something around competencies here and, and, and some, some aptitude stuff to really make sure we're getting the right people, especially from the independent sector on LPCs, because that's going to be critical, because that's where we're going to have the representation. Mark talked about it in his last answer, where nationally we've had the PSNC committee made up of, you know, 50% independent, 50% CCA. We're going to potentially lose that, and it needs to be as strong as we can get it especially from the independent sector, right at grassroots at LPCs, to ensure that, like Raj said, we've got that line all the way through to the top, so that we make sure we've got the right skill set. So I think that's uh, the main bit uh, for me. And in terms of that coordination of, uh, of those independent contractor reps, and, and Michael smiles at me because he knows I'm going to say, I know, uh, you know where I think that role sits, mate. In, in, indeed, and the NPA are trying to rise to the challenge of that on the, I guess, the... The, the wave that's coming in on the right review. Anit, thank you very much. Um, Raj, can we draw you in in terms of uh, what, what you would like to see happen next, please? Okay, I think we need to see a, a clear, uh, transparent process, uh, a well thought out and planned process uh, so that we can all buy into it. Um, from my personal perspective, uh, we will be using the resource that we have at Pharmacy London uh, it allows it to allows us to pool our risk and also pool our expertise. Uh, we've been meeting twice weekly now, and we invite people in um, into our meetings to advise us and to guide us. So we'll be using a lot of that. Uh, we will be using, as I said, uh, virtual focus groups with our contractors uh, to gauge their opinion. Like I said, we need to take the contractors with us on this one, especially the independent contractors, because I think they might find it overwhelming, um, especially reading the report. Uh, they may not be used to the language, so we need to make, make it easier for them to understand. And probably where I want to end is to give the contractors the last word on any change that we make. So it is their decision and hopefully give them the, the right information, the right tools to make that decision. And so they actually own the decision and they're actually own the change um, that's going to happen. So it's, I'd like to give it back to all the contractors and say, here, this is what you need to decide. Uh, 
of course you could ask us for help. And I like the idea that Anita's saying that there's a career pathway for LPC members, because I think we're going to need that. And dare I say, even for the chief officers, uh, we, we, <laughs> we, we need that as well. So it will be good. But I think the independent sector may need um, more help uh, actually digesting the report and coming to an informed decision. And that's where I think it's key for all of us to be working together to make sure that happens. Thank you. And indeed, in this session, we're beginning to do stuff like that. Um, Mark, draw you, draw you in now, please. Yeah. So R Rena mentioned earlier that this is the first review we've had of LPCs and representative structures, PSNC, the whole lot. And I think it, it, it's framed right from the start. It's, it's set up to uh, look at, at, at the sector in, through the lens of the pharmacy owner. Because essentially that's who we are representing is, is pharmacy owners, pharma, uh, pharmacy contractors. I think we've now got a groundswell of, of, of interest in uh, David Wright's report. So that's brilliant. That's a good start. The next step is we need to examine very honestly, all of us, whether that's uh, PSNC or LPCs, what we're doing well and what we're doing less well or where we could improve. And, and I think that objectiveness that we, we all need to bring is something that, you know, we've got to put our, our own personal interest to one side for a minute. Um, this is about the success of the whole sector, uh, not just the individuals. And, you know, it's really easy to knock representatives, whether it's LPCs or, or PSNC. You know, you, you put yourselves up for these things and, and, you know, you stand to be knocked down. And that's just the nature of the beast. But we all have a role to promote the interests of community pharmacy, whether that's, you know, the individual pharmacist out there uh, practicing in their pharmacy, right up to chief executives and, and senior people within the representative organizations. Okay, Rena, thank you. Some thoughts from yourself, please. Um, just to summarize, I think what we're saying is that actually all of us need to go through a mindset change, which is always really difficult, isn't it, to be honest with ourselves, see what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, as, as Mark said. Uh, and actually, I, I kind of feel my role in all of this uh, and what I'd like to see other contractors take on the role is to be agents for that change, uh, to show interest, uh, to, to care. Um, to strengthen that voice, there's so many great pharmacists out there and contractors who, you know, when I get together with them or on my WhatsApp groups, for example, are so vocal, yet we go to a meeting and they don't say a word, and, you know, and I really want to see those people uh, heard. Uh, I want to see their voice strengthened and I really feel there's a big need for succession planning, mentoring so that we can get the right people in these roles, uh, in these new structures that David Wright is recommending. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, if we get it right, it brings power to the people, so power to the contractors and their voice will be heard all the way through. And that's exactly what, uh, you know, that utopia uh, should be, really. Uh, and I actually think we owe it to community pharmacy to get this right. Uh, we really do, all of us, each and every one of us have got a role and responsibility to support this, to, um, you know, tease out the bits that aren't so right, to try get the right model for community pharmacy and contractors and to get the whole sector to be working together as one uh, to ensure that community pharmacy is represented and supported well. A really thoughtful exchange of views. Rina, you've done a great job on summarising our, our, our colleagues' input as well. Um, so for now, actually, uh, I would say uh, the poster above me says live with hope. And, and I think I'm hearing there's a fair bit of hope uh, on this panel that we can move this in a in a good positive direction, particularly for independent pharmacy as well. Again, thanks for joining us for the session. Thanks especially also to our colleagues on the panel for a lively discussion. Please do connect with me at the NPA. The NPA want to support and build that bridge to all our independent LPC colleague reps and chairs. Please look out for more engagement materials that will be coming out from the NPA. And I look forward to us connecting again virtually soon. Thank you.